you. And now we're moving to the next question. And we'll begin with George. Um, this is another question from the audience, and I think it's a kind of another way to think about the question that you were just asked. Um, would you be in favor of uh, revisiting the whole issue of ward supervisors? I, I imagine that any suggestion that be brought forward would be worth at least considering or looking at. However, I really do feel that the city of Janesville, uh, since the uh, incorporation of the city manager form of government and the council at large has been served very well by a council at large. And I say this because then it's not a matter of perhaps as I've seen in some communities where you're trading votes. You vote for something I want in my ward and I'll vote for something you want in your ward. And you're playing uh, ward against ward or uh, section of the city against another section of the city just for somebody to uh, get their, their way or, or, or to be able to pass a certain issue. So I really think the council at large has served the, the city of Janesville very well and my experience as an employee and as a council member has been uh, the, the council has, has uh, served and responds to the needs of the city. Thank you. Jim? I also uh, would not be in favor of changing the makeup of our, uh, our city council to have it represent wards. There's, there's a wide variation in population between wards. I would make it, I think, impractical. I think. And also, frankly, we have four candidates running for the city council. Uh, would we attract people from every ward in this city? I'd be very skeptical about it. I think you get, frankly, a more committed city council when you have a, at large rather than some uh, having people from different wards that only are representing interest of that ward. We represent the interest of our total population not of our ward, so I would not be in favor of that. Thank you. Matt? Um, from what I know about ward supervisors, at this time I don't feel like I would support the idea of the ward supervisors. I feel we are elected at large um, to the entire community. Um, just because we would have ward supervisors doesn't necessarily mean you have the best candidate from that ward as it is. Um, some wards, if you look at the results after the elections, have very low turnout. Um, essentially, if that person that shows up could have a one in three chance of electing themselves. Um, I, I think there's other opportunities, you know, besides just the council to be involved, such as serving on committees. We provide public comment at all the meetings. So I, I really do think that wards are represented throughout the whole community in the current process we have today. Thank you. Uh, Mark? I agree. Uh, the city is, uh, has been served well uh, with the at-large uh, form of government. It, it has been working well, and as they say, if it isn't broke, uh, don't fix it. And I don't see it as being broken. Uh, the fact that uh, a number of city council members live uh, uh, on, the, on the east side is, is more testament to uh, the fact that uh, people from other areas of the town sh should, uh, should get involved. And, uh, and maybe that's where the issue lies. Thank you. Um, now we're going to begin another question. We'll begin with Jim. Um, relative to sustainability, the council has supported many internal efforts as well um, as the, establishing the Sustainable Janesville Committee. What would be your top priority for action by the city as it continues to be conscious of our collective footprint on the environment? I am a, me a member of the Janesville Sustainability Committee and I I think uh, there are, we're working on about five goals right now, our committee. What are some of the things I think are important? Looking at all the city facilities and making sure that they're energy efficient. Uh, whatever, when, uh, even, you know, we have some very old buildings. I think getting them energy efficient. I think we need to convert very quickly our fleet to compress natural gas. To, reduce our footprint, I think that would be a good idea. And I also think uh, we need to, one of our goals is to make this city more of a bike-friendly city. And that 
I think can be done, and that's one of our goals, and we're going to continue working hard in our committee. Thank you. Matt? Um, my goal as far as sustainability would be to, um, as we construct or purchase new equipment, to look at the fuel efficiency, uh, as we build new buildings, to look at using alternative energy to heat, produce electricity, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think one tough part, you know, why, why the new construction be more priority than the old, is retrofitting off, often has a large expense. Uh, why I think we continue to look at that, my top priority would be to use it in new construction and with purchasing. Thank you. Mark? Uh, this is just one good reason to build a new fire station. The, the current fire station, number one, is terribly inefficient, and it's losing money. The city is losing money by keeping it open, and the longer it stays open uh, is, uh, is more money lost. Uh, other things, we need to use uh, sound uh, uh, principles in, in re redevelopment along the Rock River. When the parking plaza goes away, it, and we use the river for a variety of reasons, uh, for, uh, we need to do that wisely and in accordance with, uh, with the DNR's uh, proper uh, use of our waterways. Thank you. George? Thank you. Uh, sustainability is something that's kind of dear to my heart uh, because um, uh, without taking too much credit, I was the one that brought that forward to the city council when we first adopted the sustainability uh, uh, form and, and formed the sustainability committee. Uh, I think the thing is, is that there's several things, but, but it's going forward, uh, new construction, that new construction is uh, energy efficient that we can look at uh, equipment that we purchase and make sure our equipment is uh, operable as far as efficiencies and, and fuel efficiencies. Uh, the, the other thing that I think we can do is uh, really uh, increase our uh, pedestrian uh, uh, availability and our bicycle availability. Uh, the last thing is, is, is uh, I think, you know, the, the idea of looking at uh, a compressed natural gas is fine and I think it would work well for some of our uh, uh, the city's vehicles but I know that the police department back uh, in the 1980s did run uh, uh, tests on uh, compressed natural gas in, in their vehicles and, and uh, it wasn't as efficient as we, uh, as we thought it would be but there's been improvements and I think they could, they could take another look at that. Thank you. We're going to have another question from the audience that kind of pertains. Um, Mark, Mark referred to this, so it'll be a little bit of a repeat for you, Mark. But we're going to start with Matt. Um, what are your views on the 20-year-old fire department number one situation? I guess I got to start as the Lone Ranger here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I see the fire station number one as more of a an entire, you know, futuristic of debt approach. Um, we were presented with three packages last, or three options last year to one, remodel the station as it sits today on the current footprint, uh, two, remodel the current station, add multiple bays, and three, completely reconstruct the station. Um, I, at that time, supported re remodeling the station we have, and I still stand there today. Uh, the reason I stand there is I think this building has efficiently worked to, s to provide an emergency medical response time. Could it be more efficient um, as far as, you know, some items such as uh, dormitories, office space, uh, customers getting or citizens getting out of the building? Absolutely. Uh, but these aren't things that I feel provide a safer community. Um, and I think as the council continues to make decisions the next few years, we are going to be faced with many uh, fiscal borrowing issues as far as the downtown, continuing TIF development, and so on. Um, I think this is a big picture as far as our debt management. Okay, thank you. Mark? Well, I'm 100% behind a, a new fire station. When I was uh, on the JFD, I was uh, on the station number one uh, uh, relocation committee, and I wrote a narrative to, uh, to, uh, to get uh, a, a, uh, funds from the federal government uh, for, for new station, fire stations. And so I know that station uh, top to bottom. And uh, it needs to, uh, we need a new station to improve the operational efficiencies of the department. Is it going to get people to your house faster? Probably not. 
but it'll help improve the efficiency of the fire department just by adding, for example, more uh, f uh, police cars. Is that going to make you safer? Probably not. But the, uh, the important thing is to uh, uh, make the department more efficient, make the building more uh, energy efficient, and for those reasons, I, I support a, a new station number one. Thank you. George? I, I currently support uh, uh, the construction of a new fire station. Um, uh, I served on uh, the uh, committee uh, for the fire station for a period of time. And uh, uh, the only thing is, I, I think right now I'm a little concerned that the footprint of the fire station has expanded uh, quite a bit over the last couple of years. And I'm also concerned about uh, um, the fire station uh, displacing families and, and uh, the need to uh, uh, demolish some homes. Uh, I think that the current location of the fire department is probably the best place to, uh, to reconstruct, uh, but I, I would like to see uh, the issue still looked at uh, more closely to see if we can't reduce the cost and reduce the impact to the neighborhood. Thank you. Jim? I absolutely support a new fire station that uh, I've been in there several times. It is antiquated. And it's not fair to let our city employees work in that type of atmosphere. Uh, however, I am concerned about the cost of the $9.5 million. I am concerned about taking down 12 houses. I spent most all of the weekend talking to all the owners. And granted, progress may sometimes causes pain in that, but I just think we need to continue looking for some other central location. I believe there's still areas we can look at, and it's taken 50, 57 years for us to come up with a new station. What difference does a few weeks uh, mean? And I would say I would like to have it revisited, all the different locations plus additional locations. Thank you. Now we're going to begin another question, and we're going to begin with Mark. What can be done to help the City Council improve the working relationships between and among the members for the benefit of the City? Would you favor training and skills development in communication and other areas, or do you have other solutions? I think just showing great respect for each other uh, uh, during City Council meetings, during meetings with uh, other committees. Uh, sure, uh, any kind of uh, communication training, uh, just to be able to uh, get our points across, uh, disagree agreeably, so to speak, uh, is, is a great idea. Thank you. George? Well, <clears throat> I, you know, I, th I think the thing is, is that um, we should be able to, to conduct our, our meetings and, and our contacts in a uh, sociable manner and that and that there's uh, there's no reason why we can't uh, be respectful of each other's opinions and uh, listen to each other uh, uh, respectfully but I think we also have to be able to agree to disagree and I think you can agree to disagree respectfully so it's to me it's a matter of, of simple respect and uh, to conduct yourself uh, in a manner uh, where uh, you get the respect that you want by giving the respect to the others. Thank you. Jim? Uh, being a member of the council for the last two years, frankly, do we agree? I mean, could there have been some changes in uh, some of the words said? Yes, absolutely. I, I would say that. I would say that uh, generally, I would say by far the majority of the time, the members address each other in a respectful manner, even when there's disagreements. It's been a few minor occasions. I think when tempers flare, when people have passions for issues, unfortunately, sometimes they can, there can be some things or some ways of communicating that are not the best. I'm in favor of training for our council members. I suggested that in our budget hearings. I suggested that our, our council members take training and seminars to improve their ability to serve and to communicate with each other. I will, if I'm elected, I will continue to, to encourage that. I think we could have, there could be some favorable training that could help. 
Thank you, Matt. As far as improving relationships with the council, um, I would support um, a, a form of a group training or um, an effort to kind of bring a new council together. Uh, this last year we hadn't done that, but two years prior we did a uh, morning event and we went over some goal building. And I think the current incoming council, I believe the plan is, which I've kind of pushed for, will have a new set of goal building. And I think if we all have kind of a general set of terms or what we're looking for moving forward, that should help. I, I think the toughest part this current council has experienced is um, we all get passionate about certain issues that are near and dear to us. Uh, when we leave that night, you know, we kind of, it's the boat's been taken, we need to just let it go. Uh, when you come in the next night, it's a new night, you know, we work responsibly together. It doesn't matter what seat you sit in um, or, you know, what someone voted on the week before. It's a new night, it's a new agenda, and our job is to work and serve the citizens of Janesville.